It's Fashion Week in Berlin. Glamorous and beautiful people from around the world are here. But one man among the visitors doesn't seem quite at home, the philosopher Wilhelm Schmid. Schmid's daughter Anna would like to be a model, and she's showing her father this other world. That pink pointed cap behind you, is that considered in style? Yes, neon. Neon. Are those the colors people are wearing these days? Neon? Just hats or clothes too? Everything. It's just one style. There are thousands of styles. He's a very interested person. He's interested in many things. Someone who can get caught up in his surroundings. He's very receptive. He soaks up the environment and then he expresses what he has understood about it. What gives our lives meaning? Where and how can we find happiness? These are questions that preoccupy the philosopher, questions that everybody asks. But for Wilhelm Schmid, they're the key to the art of living. He researches happiness in all its multiple facets, including fashion. The German word for fashion, mode, comes from the Latin word modus, which can roughly be translated as way. Related to life, it means that there is no such thing as life in itself. Life always exists in a particular way. Of course, it's desirable for each person to discover and invent his own fashion, his own way of living, his own way of relating to other people and to himself. And here you can find inspiration for how that might look. Wilhelm Schmid is a philosophy professor, but he's not content simply to teach at a university. He also likes to engage with the non-academic world. Schmid prefers the life of a free philosopher who writes books. He has sold 700,000 in Germany alone. His writings have been translated into many languages. His views seem to correspond to the Zeitgeist. Zuhlkamp is Schmid's German publisher. It's one of the country's most prestigious publishing houses. Schmid's most successful book to date has been translated into 10 languages. The title in English, Happiness, Everything You Need to Know About It and Why It Is Not the Most Important Thing in Life. His latest book will also appeal to a lot of people. It's called Giving Meaning to Life. And it discusses the art of living with other people and the world. You won't find any superficial advice on how to be happy in Schmid's writings. His books are profound, precise, and intelligent. And they're also a good read. He's a philosopher who wants to be understood. His latest book took a long time to write, and it's perhaps his most important. Here he's discussing minor changes with his editor. Schmid's books are non-fiction, which is a very competitive market. Happiness is a subject that many writers have addressed, and very successfully so. But Schmid speaks to a different public, people who want to read something truly serious about happiness and unhappiness. And that's one of the secrets of his success. Schmid lets his readers decide for themselves how they should respond to his insights. He assists with the thought process and offers ideas for a living, but he never says, you should do this or that. In that regard, he's very different from the other writers. Books won't sell unless they have an eye-catching cover. And the self-employed author is financially dependent on good sales. Many factors trigger success or failure. Wilhelm Schmid knows that. And he's not too proud to get involved in the details of cover design. From the selection of font to the choice of color. It's also black. It's also black. 
Even as a child, Schmid was a bookworm. He dreamt of becoming a writer, but this ambition seemed too exotic. He came from farming stock, and there was no question of his going to university. The boy who wanted to be a writer became a typesetter. At least that brought him into contact with books. A person only becomes interested in the art of living when he needs an art of living. I come from a very modest, I would say pre-modern background, from a farm. The modern world was not very relevant. On the contrary, when I entered the modern world, I knew nothing about how people lived in this world. Nothing I had learned at home was relevant here. How was I supposed to live in this world? At first, I viewed that as my personal problem. Those personal questions led Schmid to philosophy. How should I live? What is happiness? He began searching for answers. Today he writes about questions of life in confusing times. And he has come to realize that more and more people are interested in the same questions as he is. Actually, it's very simple. The art of living means living consciously, thinking about life. What do I do? What am I doing now? Where do I want to go? And then thinking about whether that corresponds to the life I'm living. And if not, what do I have to do to get where I want to be? That's philosophy, living consciously. The painter Dita Mamel asks similar questions, but answers them differently. Not with words, but a play of color and imagination. Both men are international figures and have known each other for years. They met when Wilhelm Schmid wrote the catalog text for one of Dieter Mamel's exhibitions. Since then, they've met up regularly. <laughs> Our deep relationship is based on the fact that we both address life's essential issues and talk about life and death, pleasure and love, about joy. His free-thinking ideas are liberating. They let you live, and they encompass the whole of life. I also recognize his high degree of consciousness, that he is concentrated, present, and it stimulates a kind of calm in me. Let's step back and look at it. You can only really tell what it is from a distance. Sometimes you need to move quite far back to perceive things clearly, to recognize them and understand. Don't cling to the situation you find yourself in, but give yourself some room. Yeah, but then something that philosophers should also do, get up close again and see the detail, and to work on the detail, go and move away again. This process, distance and closeness. I love art. I think art has a lot to do with philosophy, and presumably philosophy with art. That's why incredible things appear in art, including intimidating and awful things. That's why art is there to discover all that. Modern artists are really free to do whatever they want and explore the fundamental problems of modern life. People today are free to achieve what they want. The problem, however, is what do they want? E. 
Even if we don't know exactly what we really want, at least one thing seems clear. We want to be happy, as often as can be, and for as long as possible. But how do we find the path to happiness? Wilhelm Schmid argues that happiness doesn't come automatically. We have to create it ourselves. As an expert on the art of living, he spends more than a quarter of the year traveling, explaining in readings, lectures, and seminars how that can work. First, he warns against happiness stress, the obligation to be happy. He says that happiness is not, in fact, as important as many people think. I don't try to live happily. I've never asked myself that question. I try to do the thing that I feel I should be doing. Of course, the philosopher first has to clarify what it means to live happily. And when we've clarified that, is it interesting? The boom in happiness literature gives many people the impression that happiness is the most important thing in life. It is important, but it's not the most important thing. They try to give the impression that there could be permanent happiness in life. To put it bluntly, it's a happiness lie. To the philosopher, happiness has various meanings. Schmidt calls one of them chance happiness meaning things we have little or no influence over. It simply occurs, like winning the lottery, landing a good job, or finding a soulmate. A second meaning, which is very important for a lot of people today, is what I call feel-good happiness. That's what most people mean when they say they want to be happy. They mean they want to be contented, they want success, they want to be healthy, they want to feel good. That kind of happiness does exist, and it's not a question of chance, we can create it. People just have to know what's good for them, an espresso, a glass of wine, a good meal, a good conversation, whatever. You can do that. It's not a question of chance. You can do a lot to achieve that kind of happiness. In the past, more people shared their happiness and found meaning in the same things, for instance in faith and religion. Wilhelm Schmid says there are now individual paths to happiness. Each of us has his own possibility of giving life a meaning, of feeling good, and of being happy. Even if some people see only a superficial substitute for real happiness in art, writing, the events of everyday life, or for that matter fashion, Wilhelm Schmid thinks that it makes sense to look for happiness there. For me, the meaning of life is to be happy. Everyone finds their own meaning in life, don't they? The actual meaning of life is to die. Friends, family, simply the fun you have in life. It has its ups and downs, but you can make something of it. So fun, that's what life's about. It's very important to have a meaning in life. Questions like where do we come from, where are we going, concern all of us. And fashion is, of course, also very important on this journey because many people define themselves in terms of fashion. Fashion is also about how do I look, how do I dress, how do I want to present myself. And in this context, of course, fashion plays a big role because you can also define the meaning of life through fashion.